will in some small measure tell of the part the city college is playing in civilian defense. Our studio guest this morning is Dr. Richard B. Morris, director of the City College Civilian Defense Council, and he will discuss the role of science in the war. Doctor, I beg your pardon, doctor, is there... The City College Defense Council activities. Oh, I beg your pardon. In any event, here is Dr. Morris to tell you himself. The war we are fighting is a total war. To win it, and win it we shall, we must mobilize all our resources, our manpower, our factory production, our civilian population. In this war, civilian and non-combatant have not been permitted by the enemy to live in cloistered seclusion and safety. Inside of one hour, some 30,000 peace-loving citizens of Rotterdam were killed in a systematic attack by the Nazi Air Force. Civilians must be prepared to protect themselves and their families. They must be prepared to do their part if and when the enemy strikes. They must be prepared to give of themselves in the total national defense effort. With this in mind, President Roosevelt, in May 1941, set up the Office of Civilian Defense in order to have American citizens properly prepared to defend themselves and their homes. Communities were asked to set up defense councils. Colleges and universities were urged to organize for participation in this program. It was realized that there was much that the colleges could do the basic program of civilian defense was educational. Training had to be provided for air raid wardens, auxiliary police and firemen, rescue workers, decontamination squads, nurses' aides, and so on. Colleges have experienced teachers, have laboratory facilities, and have lecture rooms. In a community such as New York City, with its seven and one half million people, the colleges, municipal and private, can do much to train people for these services. To contribute particularly to morale activities related to the war effort and to utilize their faculties and student bodies in what may be properly described as an educational program of major importance. With this in mind, we at City College investigated the program of the colleges in the civilian defense effort in other regions of the country. As a result, we decided that we would coordinate the miscellaneous defense activities which had already sprung up at the college and would utilize for our civilian defense effort our physical plant and laboratories, our courses of study, our personnel, including students, parents, alumni, and faculty wives. In the middle of December of 1941, President Harry N. Wright set up the Civilian Defense Council. The objectives of the council are threefold. First, to cooperate actively as a college unit with civilian defense authorities in any type of service for which the college staff and the student body may be fitted by experience and technical training. Secondly, to protect life and property in the college area. Thirdly, to train both the student body and the general public to the limit of the facilities of the college for necessary and useful civilian defense services. To cooperate with the council, we have set up seven committees which are mobilizing the trained personnel among faculty and students on the campus. Let us consider for just a few moments their program and accomplishments to date. First, the Committee on Personnel and Qu Qualifications has collected complete data on the special abilities of every member of the instructional and civil service staff and the wives of members of the faculty to contribute to civilian defense. We now know how many teachers have completed their course as auxiliary firemen, how many are acting as air raid wardens? How many are certified by the Red Cross to teach first aid? How many are able to teach groups such subjects as chemical warfare and decontamination and many other necessary services in this emergency? We have in the second place set up a committee on information for the armed and defense services to advise students of the opportunities for enlistment in the armed services, the relation of their college work to the military program, as well as the technical regulations and procedures of selective service. A bulletin describing opportunities of city college men for commissions in the Naval Reserve has been prepared and distributed. 2,300 students of the college are enrolled in the ROTC, the largest voluntary ROTC unit in the country. In all, some 25,000 students of the college have received the basic ROTC training. 700 commission officers were trained at the college, most of whom are now on active duty. The Committee on Defense Bonds, Stamps, War Relief, and War Conservation has sold to date approximately $65,000 worth of defense bonds and stamps. 
an increase of some $55,000 since January 1st of this year. Alumni and parents of our students are urged to purchase their bonds and stamps through Professor Nelson P. Meade in charge of sales at the college. This coming week, the committee is inaugurating a program to educate students in the importance of strategic waste and scrap materials. It is planned to encourage them to collect certain materials designated by the Bureau of Industrial Conservation and to have them sign the official government pledge card that they will not commit waste. The Committee on Civilian Protection has set up an air raid warden service consisting of some 450 students and members of the faculty and maintenance men at the main center and some 410 at the commerce center to protect lives in the event of an air raid. Upon the advice of the New York City Building Department and the college engineers, shelter areas have been determined which will ensure reasonable safety against bomb fragmentation and incendiaries. The Towns and Harris Papers, a treasure in the college's possession of first importance in the history of Japanese-American relations, are now being microfilmed by the college. Plans are underway for microfilming as well the essential college records. The Committee on Courses of Training under the chairmanship of Professor Joseph E. Wysan, is offering both to the student body and the general public a course in civilian protection. Total enrollments to date are about 5,000. Information regarding the enrollment of the public in this course is available at the Office of the Civilian Defense Volunteers, 93 Park Avenue. The course begins this coming Monday. In the daytime, it will comprise 16 hours and will be given between January 26th and February 7th from 10 to 12 in the mornings and from 2 to 4 in the afternoons. The course will be offered both at the main center and the commerce center on 23rd Street and Lexington Avenue. While no college credit will be given for the course, those satisfactorily completing it will be awarded certificates. The aim of the course is to instruct our students and other citizens to meet emergency conditions with sufficient preparation and training to make them useful to themselves, their families, their localities, and the city. While this course will not in itself provide complete training in any one specialized field, it will serve to introduce the student to opportunities in specialized civilian defense units. Much of the material to be offered is of a basic character of use to citizens in peacetime as well as during the war emergency. For day session students at both centers, the course in civilian protection comprises eight two-hour sessions distributed as follows. First, a two-hour lecture on air raid conduct and services. The purpose of this lecture is to train the student to cooperate most effectively with an air raid warden before, during, and after an air raid. Precautionary measures to be taken by the civilian in the home, public buildings, and on the street during an attack will be emphasized. It is also intended that those who attend the lecture will be enabled to give correct information to their friends and neighbors concerning the do's and don'ts in an air raid. This lecture will be under the direction of Professor Jarling and Dr. Chasney, jointly in charge of the City College Civilian Defense Battalion. Secondly, four hours will be given on the prevention of fires and the handling of incendiary bombs. The lectures are to be given by Fireman McKeon of the Lecture Bureau of the Fire Department and Inspector Meyer of the Division of Combustibles, both designated for this assignment by Fire Commissioner Walsh and Deputy Chief Inspector McCarty. Thirdly, six hours will be devoted to first aid, including the fundamentals of first aid which might be useful in an emergency, artificial respiration, the stopping of excessive bleeding, the treatment of shock, etc. These lectures and demonstrations are to be given under the direction of Dr. Abraham Sperling by members of the City College hygiene staff who have been certified by the Red Cross to teach first aid. Provision is made for actual practice by the students in the gymnasium. Fourthly, two hours on the recognition of poison gases and methods of first aid treatment to persons who have been gassed. The major points to be treated include the classification of gases as to their persistence or non-persistence and their effects on the human body and the recognition of them by odors and colors. A substantial portion of the lectures will de deal with protective measures to be taken in the absence of gas masks and gas-proof shelters. These lectures are to be given by specialists from our chemistry department under the direction of Professor Baber. Lastly, a two-hour lecture on the civilian conservation and salvage program with special attention to paper, metals, and rubber. These lectures will be supervised by Professor Charles A. Marley's of the Department of Chemical Engineering and Mr. Alex Toller of the Office of the Board of Higher Education. Motion pictures will be used for the various lectures. 
Instead of the 16-hour course offered in the daytime, we are offering at the evening sessions of both centers a compact course of 10 hours on the evenings of January 26th to the 30th inclusive, from 7 to 9 p.m. The evening course will not include first aid instruction. Owing to the general interest of the community and of other colleges in the content of the civilian protection courses we are offering, we are making this material conveniently available in a civilian protection manual to be published in February. All royalties derived from the sale of the civilian protection manual will go to the City College Civilian Defense Council for carrying on its defense activities. No individual will receive one cent. Another very essential book related to this problem is entitled Civil Air Defense by Lieutenant Colonel Augustin M. Prentice, General Staff Corps, U.S. Army. In addition, on the afternoons of January 28th and 29th, from 3 to 5 p.m., for those specially interested, a two-hour lecture on war nutrition will be offered in the auditorium of the School of Business under the direction of Professor Harrow of the Chemistry Department. At registration time this coming semester, students of the college will be given a defense course card which will offer them a considerable number of short training courses. Upon the completion of such courses, it is hoped that such students would then enroll in a particular civilian defense corps for which they had been trained at the college. These civilian defense courses by no means represent the total amount of emergency courses available at the college. The School of Technology is offering an impressive list of engineering science and management defense training courses, including a course in civil aeronautics. The public speaking department is planning to establish a short course to train defense lecturers for city departments, the Red Cross, and the Office of Civilian Defense. And a large group of instructors at the college are preparing themselves to deliver lectures throughout the city on air raid warden duties. There remain two other important committees whose activities might be described briefly. We have set up a committee on research and public information to mobilize the research skills at the college to aid the Office of Civilian Defense, the Office of Facts and Figures, and other governmental research bureaus, and in general, to cooperate in the nation's war effort in such ways as are indicated by governmental authorities. Several radio series of programs on defense subjects are being inaugurated by the Council over this station. The Speaker's Bureau has already begun to send out speakers for the Office of Civilian Defense. The Division of Statistical Service has completed a study of the age groups at the college and the effect of selective service and the college speed-up plan on the general college program. Comprehensive studies of morale in wartime are being organized by Professor Gardner Murphy of the Psychology Department. Our art section is working on important defense tasks, and our library division has now available complete sets of government manuals on defense subjects, together with the British literature and other pertinent materials. Finally, although we are primarily a men's college, we do have women students in the School of Business and Technology and many women employees. For utilization of this group, a women's committee has been set up a detailed program involving women's participation has been prepared, and the Faculty Wives Club has already begun to participate actively in this work. City College is supporting the national war effort with great enthusiasm. A unity of purpose and effort is being forged on the campus. The City College Civilian Defense Council has been instituted to serve the community in this emergency with the utmost effectiveness and with the least waste or duplication of effort and expenditure. Thank you very much, Dr. Morris. Ladies and gentlemen, from our municipal building studios, we have brought you the second of a weekly series of broadcasts telling of the part the City College is playing in civilian defense. Our speaker this morning has been Dr. Richard B. Morris, director of the City College Civilian Defense Council, and his topic was City College in Civilian Defense. This is the Municipal Broadcasting System.